<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. Yeah, I got a pretty cool little vlog planned out for you guys. It's been a minute. It's been a while since I've had a vlog. I've been gone on tour for the last two weeks, but I'm back. I hope everything is set up okay. I hope I remember how to set up my camera for a freaking vlog. But yeah, I'm definitely excited to be back here vlogging. Of course, I'm going to do the segments thing where we put all of the segments right here. Everything we're going to go through, there's going to be a lot of vape mail this week. I mean, a lot of vape mail this week. All of my vape mail just piled up over the last two weeks and I tore through probably, I don't know, eight packages, nine packages yesterday and I still have, hang on, let me count. I have 12 vape mail packages to open this week. So I have a feeling it's gonna be a real long vape mail segment. I'll try to shorten it down as much as I can. There won't be like a whole lot of lollygagging. Like there won't be a lot of shots of me going, oh well, yeah, I don't know. You never can tell what's in these boxes. I feel like I say that every week and this week, especially just with the volume of vape mail that I have, probably not a good idea to just lollygag. We're just gonna tear through this vape mail like crazy and see all of the all of the things that China has to offer. Of course, we're gonna be doing things like uh, viewer mail, getting to know Grim Green, all the other stuff. I got I got retro vaping. We're gonna set something up. Uh, set, 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 blah, blah, blah. We're gonna set something up and vape it. And of course, we've got like uh, you know news and advocacy, a juice tasting, favorite comments. A full. It's a full vlog, including retro vaping. But as you saw in the timestamp stamps that are probably not here anymore. It's an action pack. It's a full vlog this week, everybody. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I don't have a sponsorship. I don't have the spawn. I'm not going to do the TPD certified sponsorship deal uh, in this vlog. I kind of need to touch base with them a little bit. We agreed on this like months ago. This is behind the scenes. This doesn't matter. None of this is important. I'm just, I'm just not doing the sponsorship this week. I realize now I could have just not done the sponsorship and then not said anything about it. But for some reason in all of my vlogs, I feel like I just want to accept explain everything. I, I feel like I just want to explain everything that's going on. My lighting is a little bit farther back over here than it normally is because it was blinding me in the face. See, that's more information that I did I did not need to talk about. But right now, before we get into any more segments, I want to do that thing that's my new favorite thing where I hear from one of my subscribers. Right now, I'd like to hear from Chris. Nick, this is Chris. Um, just want to say uh, Thank you for everything you do, and hopefully this can get put in one of your intros. You uh, you helped me out. Uh, I've been smoke-free for three years now, and always watched your videos, and you taught me a bunch of stuff, and learned a lot from you, man, and I appreciate everything you do for us in the community. I uh, just want to give a huge shout-out to my uh, local shops, uh, Cincy Vapors, Cloud9 Vapor Lounge, and uh, my boys Rob Newton and uh, Chris McGuire down there at uh, Ground Zero Vaping. Uh, they just recently opened up a shop. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I appreciate everything you do for us, and uh, let's, uh, let's keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely. Bro, yeah, fantastic. First of all, congratulations. Second of all, thank you so much for the kind words. And of course, yeah, shout outs for, I wrote them down. Rob and Chris at Ground Zero Vapor. I'm not 100% sure where Chris lives, but I'm sure you, these are Googleable. Rob and Chris at Ground Zero Vapor. Uh, Sin Cincy? I don't I couldn't remember I, I couldn't I couldn't quite understand what you had said there. It sounded like Sin City vapes, which leads me to believe it's Vegas, but more I read it, it doesn't the more I hear it, it doesn't sound like Sin City vapes, Chris. I need some clarification. So I'm just gonna say Cincy Vapes. Cincy Vapors. Just like you did in the video. Cincy Vapes. Cincy Vapors. And of course, Cloud9 uh, Vapor Lounge. Absolutely. Consider yourselves all shouted out. Thanks to Chris. And Chris, thank you so much. If anybody else has any sort of videos like that, like a shout out they would like to do, send them on over. Everybody has a smartphone. There's no excuse. Nick at GrimGreen.com if you want to give your sh vape a sh you know, if you want to give your shop a shout out, if you want to give your mom a shout out, if you want to give your aunt a shout out. I've been through the list before, but anybody you want to shout out, sure, send them on over. I want to hear your story too. How long have you been vaping? Send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. I think that would be, uh, I think that would be super cool. So what I want to do right now is just talk about what I've been vaping. These are all newly set up 
uh, well, mostly newly set up setups since the tour. On tour, I only took a few things with me. All of that's been on video. There's no need to rehash all of that. So I came home, I basically dismantled all of my vape setups that I had, and I put, you know, some different stuff together. I'm kind of, you'll see, you'll see when we get there. First things first is a Mi 1. Uh, I'm actually down to my last Mi 1 coil head, so I'm going to need a lot more of these because the Mi 1 is like my ride or die. Just 18 milligram mouth to lung. I vape it constantly. I take it everywhere with me. It's my go-to daily banger, me one, and I finally switched out the Glacier Banana. I have been using Glacier Banana in this me one, I believe since November of last year. I have not stopped using Glacier Banana in this, but I ran out of Glacier Banana. I ran out of my own juice. Ran completely out of Glacier Banana, so I filled this up with 18 milligram Cardo Crush. Yeah, I actually haven't vaped this juice in quite a long time. It's been years since since I vaped it in high nicotine, an 18 milligram, I have a very vivid memory of the second vape bash in the Chicagoland area, and I was vaping Cardomator Crush out of a Cardomator tank, out of a Cardo tank, sitting on top of that Joe Lit D, uh, you know, NES mod. That was that was my vape for the entire event. Tasting this juice out of that Mi One, it, it just takes me back. Plus, got a nice little Paquito, what is that, little Paquito DHD tip and my favorite blue color, Mi One, 18 milligram, mouth lung, Ugh, love it. Oh, so good. Such a good vape. I love the Mi One. I think right now the Mi One, hmm, I don't know if I'm ready to make this statement right now. I'll just say this. The Mi One has been my go-to mouth-to-lung device. It's either being used or being charged, and I'm always, always using it. Whenever I want a mouth-to-lung, it's it's the me one and I'm not here trying to praise you know just sit and gush over the me one I think it's fantastic but what I really wanted to say is that I think it's great that mouth to lung devices and tanks and stuff like that are making such a huge comeback because that's how I remember vaping don't get me wrong I love sub ohm tanks I love my drippers I sit at home and I blow ridiculous clouds in my office in my living room I love it it's my preferred way to vape is with a dripper but I love that mouth to lung is making a big comeback. Uh, for the retro vaping, it's going to be mouth to lung. There's a new, uh, what's the new one from Inokin that that Demi and Phil are doing? It's a mouth to lung tank, and I'm very excited about that. I actually am really hoping that that particular tank is in my vape mail right here. Fingers crossed that we get a dope mouth to lung tank. And then there's like, you know, the new K-Fun and the Berserker, and it's great. I think mouth to lung is great. I feel very nostalgic about it. It reminds me when I first started vaping and when I first fell in love with vaping it was all mouth to lung but moving on from mouth to lung this this thing this vicious ant vanguard no this is too nice of a mod for me to even be handling got it topped with that gold recoil rebel squonk pin on the inside i did a simple 24 gauge canthal uh center post build on here it was an eight wrap around a four millimeter and let me tell you on this board the sx it's not the three sx 350j it's an it's a different board i'm gonna have to figure out out what it is. Hang on. It's from Yeehe and it's the SX475J. The SX475J. This is a complicated board, man. I had a hard time getting to know this. It wasn't until I watched a video from what was his name? Jay Hayes, yeah. Jay Hayes on YouTube. I watched his video for the Vanguard and it actually really helped me out a lot. So thank you, Jay Hayes, for that. I have really been enjoying this. It's loaded up with that Anarchist uh, Pink Lemonade. This is a dual coil. It came out to a 0.4 on the nose, so I've got this set to 52 watts. It's giving me four and a half volts. It's not quite as warm as I would like, but I've kind of been enjoying cooler vapes lately. Anyway, this is a great vape, solid squonk. Vicious Sant shit's just so expensive. It's just so expensive. Don't even go Google this unless you're you're ready to just be a little bit depressed. It's not crazy like thousands of dollars, but damn it, it's pricey. I am really putting this through its paces so far. Few flaws here and there, but god damn it, it's gonna be hard to justify that price because it's such a good vape. I actually have two squonkers in my lineup this week, which is really interesting coming from a guy who's not really like a squonker guy, but Asmodus, Asmodus did this. Asmodus made a squonker and it 
it is cool, man. It's called the Spruza 80 watt and it's stabilized wood doors. It's like an aluminum construction. It's got the touch screen on the front. It does 80 watts, single 18650. But what I find really unique about it is this really interesting pump squonk action. I've not seen anything like this before. Kind of reminds me, I don't know, a little bit of a billet box on the inside, but it's got a legitimate like brass pump on here. You flip this little light switch kind of up and down when you're squonking it. Oops, helps if you put the door on the right side up. But there's like this little light switch looking thing and you just kind of go one, two, three, and yeah, it pumps, it pumps juice right up to your atomizer, right through the squonk pin. This is the RDA it comes with. I'm not sure what it's called, but I have it set up in a single coil configuration right now. I installed some of the, uh, who was that? Beard, the, the, the In Between Two Beards coils. Coils by Ryan from In Between Two Beards. I installed one of his Fuse Claptons in here. Came out to a 0.36. I've got it rocking at 36 watts. Again, not as warm as I would like. Maybe a little bit cooler of a vape. Got this loaded up with uh, Poet pair the pair one the amaretto pair amaretto nightcap pair just because it's been like you know a little bit folly in san diego it's been cloudy and a little bit like in the 60s so to me that's fall so it's time to break out the fall flavors Anyway, I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this. I hope to review it very soon because I I've been having really just a fantastic time with it, man. Also, still rocking that wake tank. This is that same sub-ohm coil head that was in there from the review. Still on top of that USV mod that's grim green with no screen, and then the screen's hidden, and then the panel slide. This is just a cool little single 18650 banger with the wake tank. Got this loaded up with Turkish Maze, and one of my favorite things about this wake tank is maybe I'm becoming like a low wattage vapor now, but I love that you can run these .5 ohm coils at like 44 watts and still get a very delicious delicious vape Delicious, just delicious. Turkish maize is one of those flavors that like, I was really waiting till fall to really, really get into. I started vaping it in August and I was like, well, this just feels weird. I need some lemonade or fruit or something in August, but when it gets into fall, oh, Turkish maize, that freaking amaretto pear, this, this is apple butter from the, the same company that does the jungle juice. I can't remember their name, but don't worry, I'll put links down in the description to everything I'm talking about. This is the Church Hill RTA on top of here. A lot of ultim going on but it's cool it's a good vape so i'm kind of forgiving the ultim and i ultimately i, I like that this ultim is a polished ultim rather than that like hazy sort of non-translucent cloudy looking ultim this is nice and and shiny polished ultim plus it looks kind of cool on this revenant in my opinion these coils actually came out a little bit low these are sitting right at a 0.11 and i have this set to 70 watts but it is still a nice uh dench saturated vape the flavor on this Churchill RTA, which I will be reviewing soon. The flavor on this Churchill RTA eh, leaves a little bit to be desired, in my opinion. But it's still fairly delicious. Uh, last thing I've been vaping. I got back out my black and red Grim Army Hexome. I threw the Recoil Rebel on top, matte black, and then I topped it off with a Goon Nub Tip from DHD. This is the Carry one. And what it is, is it's like clear acrylic with like red acrylic in it. And it's like drippy and bloody. It looks like something from Dexter. It's for Halloween. It's the Carry. It's cool and bloody. And I really like it. Matchy match level I feel is like really on point with this setup. I'm using a DHD nub tip on the Recoil Rebel because Jess has released the adapters and this is only for the Snakebite, Airflow, Clouds Bro Clouds, non-AFC cap. It fits on there like a chuff. You just use the same O-ring that's on the top cap now on the Rebel. You pop that O-ring off, you put it on this, you pop it down. It's a perfect fit and the nubs tips, the nub tips fit in there uh, amazing. And I think this setup turned out uh, pretty rad. Anyway, I got that loaded up with, uh, oh, Leaky. Thank you, Chubby Gorilla. Leaky bottles. These 30 mil Chubby Gorilla bottles are generally pretty good. I rarely run into leaking, but for some reason, I, I got this red one out. It was completely empty, brand new, in a package. I got it out, I filled it up with juice, and ever since then, it's just been a leaky, leaky nightmare. Really kind of bums me out. If there's one thing I hate about vaping, it's getting juice 
everywhere. It gets on the mod and then it's on the bottle and it's on your hands and then your hands smell like a freaking lemon pound cake all day. I guess there's worse things in the world, but still, it's just something that really bothers me. Anyway, this is a fantastic vape as well. Oh God, I flooded the fuck out of that. Good job, Nick. Real well, well done. I assure you, when it's not fl even flooded, it's still a pretty good little vape. All right, I gotta try to vape through this, man. I may not be able to vape through that. It is so flooded right now. This is like Omboyosi in Idaho flooded. No, it's too flooded. Ugh, it's too flooded. Let's test out that Ultim ring. Oh no, yeah. See how flooded this is? Wow. That was insane. That was like two mils of juice just sitting there, just flooding. <laughs> the Ultim ring can do a lot, but it's not gonna hold back that much juice. Oh God, it's all over my hands now. Well, it pardon me while I wash my hands. I had a leaky bottle and then I dripped when I didn't need to drip and now I have juice all over my hand, all over the atomizer, all over the mod. This is exactly what I hate the most, like in the world, in the vape world. <laughs> anyway, that's what I have been vaping. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna use my really bad bumper. So just uh, let's jump into some news and advocacy. Advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. Okay, so I do have just a few corrections to do from uh, a few weeks ago. Evidently, I, there was a comment of the week about a wet burrito, and I made some sort of big deal about a wet burrito. I didn't know what a wet burrito was. I didn't know wet burrito was a real thing. I realize I live in San Diego, where the best burritos in the world are made, and I had uh, I had no idea what a wet burrito was. So thank you, everyone that commented and sent in an email telling me what an idiot I was for not knowing what a wet burrito was now I know what they are evidently now I have to go order one wet burritos it's a thing and I do want to give a real quick shout out to a guy named Bayou B A Y U I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that Bayou but he sent in he sent me this drawing I'll show you a picture of this drawing but he sent me a drawing of Robert Budzi Paulson uh, the frog that was rescued on the vape tour and he made him a full-on vape tour frog we caught a frog on the vape tour if you haven't checked out the vape tour videos go and watch those because they're it's just pure entertainment but we were driving through Oregon at night and there were a bunch of frogs on the road so Dwayne went and rescued one he rescued a little frog and then he, you know he brought it in the RV and then he put it out in the field but we named him Buddy and uh, I wanted to name him Robert Paulson and so his name is uh, Robert Buddy Paulson and there he is with the with the vape tour and a mod and uh, yeah and there you go shout out for the frog thank you Thank you, Bayou. I also, a lot of people have emailed me an article uh, recently that I wanted to talk about, about secondhand vapor. A lot of people sent this over to me. I also found it on Reddit as well. This comes from the Econo Times with the big headline that reads, scientists weigh in, secondhand vapor is not harmful. That's a pretty big statement to make, but this is actually a pretty interesting article as well. It starts off and it's talking about, you know, uh, vaping and how it started and how many people vape and how many people vape now and when it got really popular and it kind of goes over all of the stuff that we already know about vaping. And the article goes on to say, one of the more debated issues is the supposed danger of secondhand vaping. Similarly to smokers, vapors have been accused of polluting the air around them and exposing others, mainly children and young adults, to the dangers of secondhand vapor. One small but widely quoted study even went as far as to suggest that vaping seriously impairs indoor quality by depositing particles of harmful substances. However, is that really the case? The article goes on to like list the differences between smoking and vaping and how smoking isn't, you know, vaping isn't smoking, vapor is not smoke. Smoking has 4,000 included chemicals, 69 of which are considered carcinogens, while vaping on the other hand has only a handful of ingredients, none of which are carcinogenic. And this article also mentions a study that was published in 2014 from the International Journal of Hygiene and Environmental Health that concluded E-cigarette usage in a thoroughly ventilated room contributed to a 20% increase in polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. I honestly can't believe I said that correctly. I actually might not have said that correctly. A 2.4 fold increase in aluminum and a substantial increase in other pollutants. This article is very skeptical of that study. I'm very skeptical of that study as well because we don't know under what conditions those tests were done at all. We don't know what devices they were using, what liquids they were using, what the PG 
VG ratio of the liquids they were using, how much nicotine was in the liquids they were using, or if anyone in the study out of the nine people, that's nine, there were only nine people in this study. They drew those conclusions from nine people. And we also don't know if those nine people had incurred some sort of dry hit or dry puff situation, which this article calls a practice that has been discredited by scientists because it doesn't mirror real use scenarios. And they also link in this article to another study that was recently published in the Public Library of Science where they went to like 300 homes in San Diego and installed all this monitoring equipment and compared the homes where people were smoking or vaping to the air quality in the homes where nobody was doing either and they came up with completely, completely different conclusions. Out of those 300 homes in San Diego, there were 43 that reported, yeah, we, we vape, we vape in our house. And out of those 43 homes, there was no detectable changes in the quality of the air or any additional pollution. One of the, one of the researchers said, we observed no apparent difference in the weekly mean particle distribution between 43 homes reporting any electronic cigarette usage and those reporting none. In essence, vaping in indoors is the same as not vaping indoors. Your air quality will not change and you're most certainly not putting anyone at risk. There you go, black and white. You're not putting anybody at risk. Now I'm not gonna read this whole article cause it is quite long, but rather I'm gonna link to it down in the description for you to check out, read and share as you want. But it does bring up an interesting question that I would love to get your feedback on, honestly. Now if everybody knows, I mean, if this study is like wide and rampant and everybody knows that there's no harm, you're not putting anybody at risk from secondhand vapor. I don't think that means that we should just be allowed to vape wherever we want. I think it's completely reasonable for places like, I don't know, the mall or the grocery store or the Apple store or even some bars and casinos to still want to ban vaping or prohibit vaping on their properties, you know? I still think we need to exercise a lot of vaping etiquette. If you go somewhere, if you go to a restaurant and they say, oh no, no, sorry, you can't vape in here. We can't just go, oh yeah? Well, well, this study says otherwise. I think we should definitely be against usage bans legislated by the state. Like when we were in Utah or we were in Oregon and the state has said, you cannot vape in this vape shop. I think we should definitely, definitely be against that. But I think when a private business such as the Apple store or a bar or wherever else, if they say they don't want vaping inside their stores, then you, you respect that. That's their business and they can just tell you to leave. Ultimately, I don't think we should be vaping where we're not allowed to be vaping, but I think this study really helps out in the future when there's more usage bans coming and happening within different states because a lot of that is going on right now. There's a lot of flavor bans happening right now, but there's always a lot of like usage bans happening. Not indoors and not on the sidewalk and not this and not that. And yeah, I think we need to fight that legislation. And that doesn't mean that if we, if we fight that legislation and we win, that doesn't mean that we're suddenly allowed to just have cloud comps outside of JC Penney's. I think we still need to be respectful and I still think we need to have some vapor etiquette. And for me, if I'm standing outside of the Apple store at the mall and I have my little me one, yeah, I'll do a little vaping, just, you know, a little stealth vaping. You hold it in, you blow it a little bit. Nobody cares, nobody smells anything, nobody cares. And I am gonna end this by reading the last paragraph of the article, which I think sums it up very nicely. The assumption among vape proponents is there is still a fear that vaping can lead to smoking. That's the only logical reason why there would be so much bad and misleading information about secondhand vapor coming from certain reputable scientists. They fear that vaping could lead to renormalization of smoking. That couldn't be further from the truth. Vaping should be seen as a highly successful method for smoking cessation and further attempts to demonize it will only lead to fewer people deciding to go that route. If that comes to pass, it will be guilty of doing a great disservice to public health. Absolutely, I agree with that article. I'll be posting a link down in the description and that de that renormalization of smoking is one of my most uh, annoying things that I, I have ever heard ever in my life. I do not, not believe that vaping renormalizes smoking. Vaping is something that is completely 
on the other end of the spectrum from smoking. You can't say that vaping renormalizes smoking the same way that you can't say drinking a glass of water will uh, normalize drinking a glass of vodka. It's a slippery slope. It's a logical fallacy, and I do not, do not agree with it. But of course, I'd love to get your thoughts on the subject. Are there vaping bans in the places where you live? If you're one of the people that live in Utah and you can't vape inside vape shops, how does that affect you? Do you sometimes vape inside vape shops even though you're not supposed Post to and ultimately do you think that it'll renormalize smoking and everyone should just say no just don't even bother answering that question unless you disagree do you really think that it will renormalize smoking I would I would love to get your feedback on that <sighs> anyway that's what I got for news today everybody if you're ever curious about what's going on legislatively in your particular state area or city or anything like that you can always go over to CASA you click on the get involved you click the calls to action it'll show you everything that's happening the upcoming le upcoming legislation Legislation. I know before I left for tour, there was something happening in New York. I didn't see the final results of that. I believe it was a flavor ban and a usage ban. I'm not sure what's going on in New York, but CASA for me is the place that I always get, uh, you know, I always get my advocacy news from CASA. Anyway, like I said, that's really all I got for news. I uh, don't really have any self-serving news. Do I have any self-serving news? No, not really. I mean, everything should be getting back on schedule. I'm done traveling for the year, so we'll have a regular diet of reviews and vlogs, maybe some fun stuff thrown in there as well. And tonight we're actually going to be doing the beer segment uh, with some friends. We're going to wait until tonight. Uh, we're going to be in our Halloween costumes. We're going to do the beer segment upstairs with some friends. I think it's going to be highly entertaining. In fact, I might do the Getting to Know Grim Green segment as well. Tonight we're having some friends over, just a few friends, it's like two friends are coming over. We're all going to dress up. We're going to watch movies. We're going to, you know, drink and listen to Cannabis Cast and do stuff like that. But I think I'm going to shoot the beer and I, shoot, I think I'm going to shoot the Getting to Know Grim green section later tonight but right now what we're gonna do is yeah we're gonna have to get in a time machine because beer is next so here is beer from tonight All right, guys, well, since I'm sitting up here in my kitchen, uh, it's pretty obvious that I didn't shoot any video last night. We had a bunch of people over for a Halloween party last night, and we're all sitting up here, and we're eating, and we're drinking, and we're watching The Craft, and we're hanging out and having a great time, and I just didn't really want to shoot any video. The idea of, like, going down to my office and, like, oh, I gotta get the camera, gotta get the battery, gotta get my memory card, gotta bring it up here, gotta bring up my microphone, gotta bring up my tripods, I gotta, you know, you guys gotta be quiet, we're gonna shoot shoot some video over here. I just wasn't feeling the beer segment last night. So now you're going to get lunch beer segment uh, in my kitchen in this vlog. And that's okay. It's whatever. We adapt and move forward. Anyway, the beer we're going to be tasting today, this is Blind Pig from Russian River Brewing. Uh, not too long ago, earlier in this summer, my dad and my stepmother Lon came down. They live in Northern California and they brought a cooler. Literally, they drove down and they kept on ice a bunch of bottles of beer from Russian River Brewing. They brought me a bunch of Pliny the Elder, and they also brought me some Blind Pig. Now, I truly and honestly cannot remember right now if we've had the Blind Pig on the vlog before, but if we have, it's cool. We're doing it again. It's a repeat. I believe Blind Pig is another IPA from Russian River. They're really known for the Pliny the Elder. That's like the IPA of all IPAs. Whenever, whenever uh, bars down here in San Diego get a little bit of Pliny, they always always ration it. It's like, well, you get one pint and that's it and you have to drink it here. They're really strict about this Pliny the Elder stuff. So I'm really interested to try this Blind Pig. I'm a huge fan of Pliny the Elder. It's one of the very few, very, very few IPAs that I really, truly love. This bottle of beer has remained chilled since it left the brewery. I just think I just think that's so cool. So I'm going to be pouring it into a, uh, you know, a tulip style glass here. Yeah, it's light, it's frothy, it's got a creamy head on there. Did a really hard pour. Look at that head. Look at that head. I'm gonna have to drink through that head like a man, as Ruby Roo would say. Wow, look at that. All right, uh, I'm just gonna let this settle down for a hot minute, and I'm gonna see what, what the internet has to say about Blind Pig. Yeah, it seems to be quite the popular beer. It's rated at uh, 4.3 out of 5 over there on Beer Advocate. People seem to really like it. The low reviews are very low in numbers. The 
This one reviewer says, big foamy head on top, dark grapefruit body, florally hops, very pleasant aroma. After seven days, we drunk this and it hardly changed from room temperature and very much liked its smoothness and taste. Understated carbonation or effervescence, just as good cool or room temperature. Had a fresh bottle four years later, good and smooth, though not as amazing as in the original Growler. Yeah, so there you go. This is an IPA. I'm not a huge IPA guy. I really... I don't know. I, I like, look, I don't want this to be an IPA thing, okay? I do like some IPAs, but they are very rare and very few and far between about the IPAs that I actually really truly enjoy as a beer drinker. It's a lot like vaping. I have a very specific beer flavor profile that I really, really enjoy, and I don't really deviate from that so much. And IPAs aren't really super included in that. It's They are the minority in the beers that I like to drink. But with that said, I am a big fan of Russian River Brewing, and so I'm really interested to see how this blind pig goes. Anyway, cheers. Here's to you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's actually a lot sweeter than I was expecting it to be. It actually reminds me of, uh, there's a brewery here in San Diego called Green Flash, and they make an Imperial, I think it's an Imperial IPA. I should just look on Google. I think it's an Imperial IPA. It's called Le Freak. Oh, Le Freak is a Belgian IPA. Well, that's what this really reminds me of. I remember that Le Freak from Green Flash very vividly because it was such a unique IPA. I got a lot of sweetness from it and that's kind of what I'm getting out of this beer as well is a lot of like upfront sweetness. There's not a lot of that like bitter IPA, hoppy like jowly mouthwatery feel to it. What I get is a lot of like good upfront sweetness. Wow, that is a, uh, that's a truly delicious beer. This is a very sessionable IPA, which I don't think I've ever said about any IPA ever, but this is fucking delicious. Yeah, wow, that's really good. It's, uh, it, like I said, upfront sweetness, very drinkable. It's much more mellow than a lot of other IPAs. It seems like there's this competition within beer makers to make like, oh, this is the most hoppy, IPA, it'll just make your fucking face cave in. And I'm not really a big fan of that. I like a little bit more subtlety. I like a little bit more mellowness. This is nice and mellow. It's a little bit more subtle. It still does taste like an IPA, but you get that nice upfront, sort of like citrusy sweetness. The only thing I brought it up here to pair with was uh, Vlog Day. Vlog Day is uh, like a lemon cream, sort of uh, pudding bakery type of flavor. It, it's nice and sweet and lemony, and I think, <coughs> Oh, pardon me. I think it might actually pair really well with this beer. Make sure this isn't overly flooded. All right, let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's great. That's a great little pairing right there. That is a great little pairing. I like it. I like that pairing and I am actually really into this beer. So it's lunchtime. I'm gonna finish up this beer. I'm gonna finish my lunch. I'm at my lunch. <laughs> my lunch. I'm going to finish my lunch. I'm going to finish this beer and I might sit up here and answer a few emails as well. But anyway, that's what I got right now for the beer segment. And next we're going to go downstairs and we're going to tackle that giant pile of packages. It's time for vape mail. Oh, good Lord. I can't believe this is really about to happen. I'm about to tear into a whole mess of vape mail right now. Thankfully, I got a new knife. I got a new knife from a gentleman in Colorado. I do not remember your name. I want to say it started with an R because that's what stuck out to me. I'm just waving this knife around. I want to say it started with an R was your name? Rob or Randy or Robert or something like that. Anyway, if you gave me a knife in Colorado at the Vaporgate event on the vape tour, thank you. Please comment down below so I can give you proper credit. But this knife is the coolest knife. It's sharp. It's so sharp. I actually got two knives on tour. The other one, Dwayne, is mailing me because I was really sketchy about flying with knives. I was not worried about any of my vape gear on tour. I was worried about these knives. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get these knives home. I had to check my bag and Dwayne, Dwayne and Jess were like, oh, you can check your bag and put a knife in it. You can check your bag. And I said, oh, okay. I feel weird about that, but I'm going to throw this knife. I'm going to check my bag. It made it to San Diego. Probably could have taken both knives home, but I was feeling, uh, you know, I was I was feeling really nervous about it. So I have Dwayne shipping me some stuff from the tour, but I got a new knife. 
I got a lot of packages. There's, there's a lot, so we're going to do this. Of course, it's not a vape mail segment without my uh, vanilla-scented garbage bags. Oh, they smell good. They smell good like vanilla, you guys. All right, first things first, let's do this. This knife is just sharp, just obscenely sharp. Something from Wismec. New samples for your testing. And this is the Rillo RX2. Oh, this is the uh, 2700 Rillo. Oh, nice. Interesting. I've been wanting to try this. I saw a few pictures on Instagram and I thought, wow, that actually looks pretty cool. And don't forget, as always, when we're going through this vape mail here, there's going to be one thing. There's going to be one thing that we're going to set up and we're going to vape. In fact, I'm going to make this an interactive part of the vlog and I'm going to let you know how that's going to work as soon as we get through all the vape mail. I'm going to narrow it down to like two different things. What the heck is this? This is the Desire mod? Desire? Does anybody know anything about this? The Desire? Desirevape.com. I mean, I know we have a lot to get to, but I'm kind of interested as to what the hell this actually is. Oh, okay. Oh, crazy. Yeah, I've seen these. I've seen these on Instagram. I've seen a few people post these. Look at that. Look at that thing. That's a look at that thing. That's crazy. That's crazy, dude. I'm assuming the middle of this lights up. It's got a big fire button right there. That is definitely a thumb fire button. Not clicky, a little bit uh, squishy, a little bit rattly as well. Just some first impressions. Dual 18650. It's weighty. It's heavy as well. Interesting. Yeah, the desire. And like I said, we're going to pick something in this vape mail to set up and vape here in the vlog. Additionally, if there's anything that you see that I open here in the vape mail, like really, maybe you're really kind of like on the fence about this desire mod. If there's anything that you want to see a review for sooner rather than later, just let me know down in those comments below. I don't know. This looks kind of cool. I'm kind of excited to see this all lit up. I really hope that lights up in the middle. If that lights up, boom, this gains brownie points. Continuing onward. Something from Geek Vape. Oh, the drop. This is the drop RDA, and this is the Zeus RTA. I don't know anything about the Zeus RTA, but I am familiar with the drop RDA. This was done by, uh, you know, y you know that guy, that guy. Vapor Chronicles, the Vapor Chronicles, I believe. It's got a pretty interesting deck. I don't know. Okay, this is in the maybe. This is in the maybe pile. This is in the maybe we'll set it up on this vlog pile. Yeah, the Zeus RTA looks... Uh, Looks like an RTA. Looks like an RTA with top airflow. Interesting. It's kind of got that cool brushed aluminum look that I really like. I think we need more of that in vaping is brushed aluminum. I think it looks cool. Or like media blasted, like that media blasted soft gray aluminum color. I'm really into that. I am spending way too much time on all of these. I'm acting like I have six packages when I really have a thousand. Oh, the Pulse. The Pulse BF box mod. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, that could be a thing. I already have a lot of squonkers set up. Uh, I don't know if I should put this in the maybe pile or not. I did get pink doors, though. <laughs> Features. Affordable. That's good. I, like that they, I like that they just threw that on there. Affordable. All right, Pulse BF box mod. It looks like Coilmaster just sent me a bunch of... Uh, Battery cases. So, Coilmaster battery cases. Here's my review. It's plastic, it holds batteries. Coilmaster battery case. Oh, this was this was definitely opened previously to my getting it. And they opened one of the RDAs. What the hell, DHL? What the hell? They opened one of my RDAs and then left the parts just sitting around in the bottom of the packaging. Ah, it's whatever. This is the Conspiracy RDA. Conspiracy RDA. I've seen it on Instagram. Again, like I always say, I've seen this on Instagram. Looks pretty cool. I'm excited to get into it. Lots of spare parts. It looks like it has silver posts. Conspiracy RDA. This is something from Digiflavor. Oh, good lord, it's a vape mat as well. Vapor, what? This is, this is, this, this is seriously the most unappealing thing I've ever seen. And I don't mean to sound like some old curmudgeon -y vape guy, but this is a vape mat that I wouldn't, I would never really rock. Heaven's Gifts, 10th anniversary, 
Vaporesso, and it's got Vaporesso's social media and stuff on it. I guess if you're like a huge, huge Vaporesso fan or a huge Heaven's Gifts fan, this would otherwise, no, what? No, I don't need this, sorry. I'm, I, you know, look, you know, I, I definitely sound like old curmudgeon -y vape guy. But, uh, oh, it's another drop. Never mind. Oh, that was useless. It's another drop, which only means good things for you guys because you guys get them in the $2 sales, or at least the patrons do. Sometimes the vloggers do, but mostly the patrons do. Oh, this is the Pharaoh Mini. Yeah, I kind of actually want to look at this guy. Yeah, we've only got a few packages left. I'm going to take a quick look at the Pharaoh Mini. It says it comes with two different decks, two milk, de two different capacities, and two different drip tips, an 810 and a 510. That's interesting. Oh, Ultim. Look at that Ultim on my thing. Well, I mean, that's uh, kind of an 810, but it's the wrong diameter on the outside. That's not going to fit on any other 810s. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that looks much better. And then you get a red 810. In fact, that would look actually pretty cool on that black and red hexome as well. Kind of a cool little looking uh, RTA right there. Pharaoh Mini with the... Uh, Red 810. Oh, strange. Oh, this is gonna be strange. This is gonna be weird. It looks like it's got a weird deck. It looks like there's a screw on the top that you need to unscrew before you can fully disassemble it. Kind of like those uh, those UL tanks. Like It was like the Crown 2 or the Rafale tank or something like that had the screw on the inside. Anyway, yeah, Pharaoh Mini. What? Druga? Druga did a little squonk box? Is this a box mod? Why am I talking like this? Oh yeah, wow. They did a little uh, Druga squonker. That's pretty cool. That is a tiny little squonker. Oh, that's crazy. And it came in no packaging. It was just wrapped in bubble wrap. Oh, wow. And it's packed with everything you need. There's an RDA on the inside and it says how to adjust the nut to make a full contact. Oh, yeah. That's got a, that's got a cool little button in there as well. Wow. And it comes with an RDA. It's the Druga, but it's got a squonk pin pre-installed on it. Now, I always really like the Druga RDA. I just never did a review for it. This actually looks smaller and narrower than the Druga Just. The Druga Just RDA. Same deck. Same deck. Same, uh, same deck. Same everything. Same deck. Same big thumb screws on here. Aluminum. Cyclops Airflow. It's a very just quick and dirty RDA. There's not a lot to this. Bunch of spare parts. It's a single 18650 guy. I believe the battery is held on by magnets. I believe the door is held on by magnets to the battery, meaning there's only one series of magnets right here and those hold on to the battery, which in my experience is never like a super good move to do. But it's fully mechanical, squonker right there. Yeah, cool. It's coated kind of like uh, the Vapor Shark, uh, you know, Vapor Shark DNA 200s and 250s used to be. It's got that like sort of soft rubberized finish. Yeah, and it just comes in a tiny little package like this. Just that's it. That's all you get. Just a tiny little package right there. That's literally how this mod comes. No box, no nothing. You just get just the box with an RDA on the inside. Well, there you go. The Druga Squonker. We're down to the last three, you guys. <sighs> the finish line is near. All right. Well, there's some cotton and there is the Ray RTA from Coilmaster. The Ray. It kind of looks like, ah, I don't know. It kind of looks like a lot of other RTA. It kind of aesthetically looks like the Troll RTA. Does anybody know anything about the Ray RTA from Coilmaster? They have that other Effly or Elfie or whatever the heck RTA that is from Coilmaster as well. I don't know. Which one do you want to see? Which one do you want to see first? And some pro cotton, which I have a feeling is going to be Cotton, bacony, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, it kind of reminds me of native wicks, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting cotton. I'll, I'll build with that. I'll, obviously, I'll give it a shot. Oh, this is the Bogan RDA. This is the Bonza RDA. I this dropped like the hype around this was when I was on tour and I was kind of missing what was going on because I wasn't on social media as much, wasn't on YouTube as much, and I really want to know about this RDA. I think the top contender right now is still the drop, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the internet decide which RDA I set up. That airflow is crazy, dude. And that deck looks crazy as well. Lots, lots of airflow. Okay, yeah, anyway, cool. This is gonna come down to the internet, but right now it's between the Bonza RDA and the Drop. Finally, the last package is here. Boop. And what are you? 
Ah, oh, this is something from Joytech. This is the Joytech Exceed Expectations. They're calling it the Exceed. Looks like an uh, looks like an all-in-one kit. Looks like a little sub-ohm tank. Looks like a little battery. This is great. Uh, I definitely want to try this out because a lot of uh, smokers and vapors, uh, believe it or not, are not really after uh, like a big dual 18650 box mod and some rebuildable RTA that you have to build and wick in a weird way. A lot of people like things really simple. I like things really simple, which is why I use my Mi 1 so much, but I know that a lot of people like things really simple, so I am very interested to try this out. Look at this little guy. Look at that. Look at that little guy. Yep, it's just uh, one, two, three, four, five. Lights. Oh, there's lights. Lights happen. That's actually pretty cool, man. Oh, that is definitely mouth to lung. That is, uh, that's definitely mouth to lung. That is 100% a mouth to lung tank. Top fill, coil head, mouth to lung tank. For sure. That airflow, even fully open, it's very, you could almost lung it, but even at fully open, I would still go mouth to lung on that. Cool. Anyway, I'm going to use that. I'm going to set that up later. The Joytech Exceed. Okay, so it's between the Bonza RDA and the drop RDA as to what I will set up in the vlog here. So what I'm going to do right now is this is how it's going to work. You can do polls on Instagram now. I shoot the vlog on a Tuesday. Not sure if this was just general information that's out there or not, but I always shoot my vlog on a Tuesday. That way I have all of Tuesday, all of Tuesday night, and then I have most of Wednesday to edit it so that by Thursday morning it is fully edited and uploaded and, and rendered so it's 1080 ready to go every Thursday morning. That's my schedule. So here's how we're going to let everybody vote. The first run eh, it might be a little bit rough because Instagram only lets you do a yes, no, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a picture of these, these two RDAs right here, and then I'm going to post this on Instagram and I'm going to say, what RDA should I set up for the vlog this week? Vote yes for the drop, vote no for the bonza. And I'm going to post this and then I'm going to wait and see the results and whichever one gets the most votes, and that's the one I'll set up in the vlog. That's cool, right? I think that's cool. So every Tuesday, look in my Instagram story to vote on which one I should set up for the vlog. I would like to do this every week if I could. All right, well, two hours later, it looks like the Bonza RDA won just marginally. It was 49% for the drop, 51% for the Bonza RDA. So remember, keep an eye out every Tuesday in the early afternoon afternoon time. I'm going to post that on my Instagram story and you can vote to see what gets set up in the vlog. And this week it's going to be the Bonza RDA from Vaping Bogan. It was fairly easy to build. I was looking at the deck and I was like, I'm not quite sure what, what the point of any of this is. There's like two high holes and then there's two lower clamp parts. And I was kind of looking at it going, well, I don't know. Let's see. What's the benefit of any of this? And so I started fiddling around and I installed the coil, like one through the clamp and one through the hole. And there were some MTurk coils, so they kind of didn't reach that far because that distance is a pretty big distance. So what I decided to do was I just took some MTurk aliens, they came out to a 0.11, and I just did a center post build. I put them both through the clamps. I just slid them right in through the clamps, screwed it down, it, it, it tightened everything up, clipped it, wicked it. It was uh, it was basically a breeze to build. I mean, I'm. That was, I don't know what else to say. It was really easy to build. Doing it that center post way, I thought it was really easy to build. I, you know, I'm not sure. It's kind of a big distance between the far clamp and the far hole. That's kind of a big distance. You kind of need to make maybe a little bit longer of a coil to span that distance there. But going through the two clamps to do a center post build, easy peasy. In, screw it down, you're good to go. I've got this all wicked up, but I haven't vaped it yet because I want to vape this uh, vaping monkey juice. Vaping monkey, he's one of my, he's one of my oldest friends in the vaping industry. I admire the fuck out of that guy. And way back in 2012, I think, at VaporCon in uh, Virginia, I uh, had his monkey cream juice. And I know it's named monkey cream, and that's gross, but it's not named monkey cream anymore. It's just called the MC. And at the time, when I first had this monkey cream juice, it was 18 milligram. It was out of a mouth-to-lung cardo tank. And I was convinced that this was the best juice that I had ever had in my life. Up until until that point, it trumped everything. I fell in love with MC, with Monkey Cream. And now he does the uh, 
you know, he does the MC in a big 100 mil bottle. I don't know if he's changed the recipe or anything, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna juice this up. Even just looking at this deck, this is an atomizer that is definitely bleh your juice friendly. You just bleh your juice and maybe give it a little bit of a side to side to get to all the coils. This came out quite low and I did put it on that desire mod. Came out to exactly a 0 0.10. I have this set to 90 watts and no, this X, it doesn't light up. Well, nope, I'm an idiot. It does light up. Mine lights up blue, and it actually looks pretty cool, so disregard what I said. Put the buttons on this side. Hey, there you go, the vapors are happening. Airflow is also pretty interesting too. It's kind of Mutation X-y. Remember way back in the day, the Mutation X, it was just a wall of holes. Just This is just a wall of holes. Nice O-rings on the bottom, and there's no graduated AFC, meaning you can't just turn off like one slot of holes. You turn them off vertically. It's like vertically they will close. Let me make sure I get this on here. I was testing out the airflow and I think I liked it half open. I think I liked two full rows of the holes on the outside closed off. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful, smooth airflow. It's almost like the perfect resistance. If you get this RDA, close off two stripes on the AFC, and that is like damn near my perfect, perfect airflow. Really good job on the airflow on this. I took that big red drip tip off on there and just popped a black, you know, a black Dilrin, you know, 810 compatible drip tip in there. So a 0.1 at 30 watts. Let's give it a try, Bogan. This is the Bonza RDA. Am I saying that right? Is it Bonza? Is it Bonza? I don't know. Vaping, you know, he, he's got, Bogan's got that, like, uh, that, that accent going on, that strong accent going on. So I don't know if he says it, like, in a weird way, like, I'm supposed to be saying it a certain type of way. Bogan, if you ever watch my vlogs, just let me know if I'm saying it right. Bonza? I think it's the Bonza RDA. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's the MC I remember. Yeah, this stuff is, uh, this stuff is very delicious. It's really even hard to describe. It's like bakery-ish. It tastes like bakery, caramel, butterscotch, bourbon kind of thing happening. I actually really love this juice. It gives you a weird sensation when you're vaping. It almost like drinking alcohol. Like it feels... I don't know, it doesn't feel mentholy, but it's that same sort of like sensation, but with no menthol and not, not cooling. It's not cooling in any way. You just get a, a, an interesting sensation when you vape it. Anyway, enough about the MC. Let's talk about the Bonza. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It was fairly simple to build. I'd like to experiment with some more builds on it. Very easy to wick. Nice O-rings on the bottom. Nice O-rings for the AFC. I like the AFC closed off about two rows. Gets nice and smooth. 810 compatible. Sitting on top of the Desire mod. Which, I know it's not about this mod right now. Now, but this is really a thumb friendly mod. This is not a finger friendly mod. And with a mod like this, I would love to have a button right here, but I can't, I have to flip it around and hit it with my thumb. Oh well, first world problems. Yeah, I mean, shit, flavor's pretty good, and this is a Clouds Bro Clouds. I mean, keep in mind, this is a 0.1 at 90 watts, so yeah, it's gonna be real Clouds Bro Cloudsy, but this is very Clouds Bro Cloudsy. Just inventing new words, Clouds Bro Cloudsy. <laughs> Doesn't even make any sense. Just fucking cloud comp every day. Crazy amounts of clouds happening right here out of this Bonza RDA. But anyway, Bonza RDA. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a, I'll spend a lot more time with this Bonza RDA. Thanks for sending it over Vandy Vape. Shout out to Vaping Bogan on his RDA. I think that's cool. I'm excited to use it. And I'm gonna keep using it, uh, pardon me, you know, before it gets a full review or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all, that's all I got. What are, we, what are we still doing here? I can't believe we made it through all of that vape mail. We made it through all of the vape mail and we set up the Bonza and we're vaping it. So that means next, we're going to pop upstairs real fast for a retro vaping that I am pumped on. Retro vaping.
Well, we're back here in my very well-lit corner of my living room to do some retro vaping, and I'm really excited about the retro vape I have today. Earlier in the vlog, we were talking all about mouth-to-lung and how mouth-to-lung is making kind of like this big comeback, but with like good mouth-to-lung stuff. You cannot talk about mouth-to-lung stuff without talking about the K-Fun. It's like, it's, it's because the K-Fun's basically like the king of mouth-to-lung. At least it always will be to me. What I set up to retro vape today, this is the K-Fun Lite Plus. This isn't the stock K fun light plus this is basically my original k fun light plus deck but with a different tank and a different chimney back when the k fun light plus was really being the most k funny k fun that it could possibly k fun there were all sorts of like aftermarket i guess or third party additions you could do to your k fun you could make the tank a little bit bigger you could make the tank smaller you could make it like a you know what was that called what was that like the bell cap like it was rounded on top anyway this was some sort of like drop tank kit. It made the tank a little bit smaller and it changed the top of it as well. I always really like the stock K-Fun Light Plus, but I really like it like this. This is how I personally remember the K-Fun Light Plus and I used this for years. I mean, years on end I used this tank. And honestly, in my opinion, I, I think it's still one of the best mouth-to-lung tanks, if not the best mouth-to-lung tank. Me one, not included. Me one is kind of, I don't know, it's its own thing and it's fine and it's different. It's hard to compare with the K-Fun Lite Plus because with the K-Funs you get such good flavor. And now I'm not saying that the Me One has crummy flavor. I'm saying that the K-Fun will always beat the Me One in the flavor department. I'm sorry, I love you Me One. The K-Fun will always beat you in flavor. I built this just today. I used 24 gauge uh, Canthal wire. I did it around a one and a half millimeter and I did an eight wrap. And you know, I'm not gonna explain how to completely build a K-Fun, but it's just two screws. You wrap your coils, you put them on the screws, you screw the screws down and it holds your leads in place. Your coil is sitting right over the airflow and all you have for airflow, it's not adjustable. There's just a little hole right here. You see that little pinhole right there? How about right there? You see that little pinhole right there? That's your only airflow on the K-Fun Lite Plus, at least this K-Fun Lite Plus. I don't think any of the K, no. All K-Fun Lite Pluses, there was no adjustable airflow. It was one hole. Thankfully, that one little airflow hole was perfect perfect for mouth to lung. Uh, this is sitting on top of that Segeli, uh, I can't remember it. It was the something 66 watt. I want to say it was like the Enya 66 watt, but I don't think that's true. I'll track this down and I'll put a link down in the description. I'm going to try to find a link for the K-Fun Lite Plus. I think all that exists on the market today, new, would be a clone sort of situation. This isn't a tank that they have built or, you know, uh, supported in, in quite a long time. But anyway, I got this all built. I loaded it up. 18 milligram Glacier Banana. The great thing is this is a 0.46 and I can rock it at 20 watts. Two zero. You're not hearing things. 20 watts. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this. Um, it's a fantastic mouth to lung. I mean, unbelievably, hands down, possibly my favorite mouth to lung tank of all time. Mm. And it stands the test of time. It's easy to build, easy to wick. It all goes together really well. This is an authentic Svoimesto uh, K-Fun Lite Plus. The construction, amazing. Fit and finish is perfect. I I'm just gonna keep gushing about this tank. What I'm also gonna do is link down the description to my original K-Fun Lite Plus video that I did where I just did more of the same. It was just gushing. I showed, I showed building it, I showed wicking it, and then it was just me going how great it is for like 15 minutes. And that's basically what this retro vape is gonna turn into. I love it. I think it is the best mouth to lung tank that I have ever used. Keeping in mind, I haven't used some of the new ones. There's some new ones coming out. I know that Inakin has one coming out. I know I have one downstairs from somewhere. Did you flavor maybe? They did that siren. They did a they did an old siren and then they did, they did a new siren as well. I'm gonna have to go look and see what I have. But yeah, K-Fun Light Plus, dude, it's banging. And the flavor on this tank is, I mean, top notch. When I think of like top notch, good, top notch, can I top, I need to stop saying top notch. When I think of like good, Stellar, very good, amazing, top not I said it again. Really very motorcycle. Really very 
good, just spectacular, immaculate flavor. I think of the Kfon Light Plus. It has never let me down in the flavor in the flavor department. This is Glacier Banana. It's a juice that I have been vaping literally for years on end now. I'm very familiar with it. I know exactly how it is supposed to taste. And let me tell you, at 18 milligrams in here, it, it has never tasted better. And you get that really nice 18 milligram throat hit. Mouth to lung, 18 milligram throat hit. That's the sensation that I'm after. That's the sensation that I miss. And, and keep in mind, anybody else looking for that like big throat hit sensation, like a mouth to lung with a big throat hit. I don't like salt nicks. I, I talk about it all the time. I like 50-50 PGVG traditional 18 milligram nicotine. That's the throat hit I like. And the bummer part is you do kind of get acclimated just a little bit to throat hit over time. Back when this was my daily banger and I vaped nothing but the K-Fun Light Plus, every day I would start off and it would be like 18 milligram and I'd be like, yeah, throat hit. And then kind of towards the end of the day, the throat hit kind of dissipates a little bit. You get kind of acclimated to it unless you pause. Oh, it's so good. Still good. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. It's amazing. The K-Fun Light Plus, I don't know. If there's some sort of like lifetime achievement award for mouth to lung tanks, I, I would give it to the K-Fun Light Plus. No questions asked. I just think it's a rad tank. I I'm glad I set this up. I want to keep using it. I'm going to keep using this tank. I'm going to keep using this exact setup, even with this ridiculous drip tip on top. I'm not sure exactly where this came from. I think it was from just that tip. And I think I say that every single Single time but this time I'll actually make like an honest effort to try to like track down I don't think they sell this exact tip anymore but I'm gonna try to find just the tip anyway I'm gonna wrap this up retro vaping K fun light plus I'll try to track down a link maybe where you can buy it or buy a clone but I'll definitely be putting a link down in the description to my original K fun light plus video where you can just see me gush about the K fun light plus for 10 minutes or so it's great it's just a beautiful tank all around anyway I'm gonna stop gushing about it now but we're done with retro vaping which means we need to go back downstairs and we are going to do some getting to know Grim Green. All right, well, let's do a real quick getting to know Grim Green. If anybody out there viewing the vlog right now has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered on this vlog, just send them over, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, getting to know Grim Green, and it will get read and filed accordingly. Additionally, if you are uh, if you have a smartphone, which I believe everybody in the world does now, if you have a smartphone, just shoot a quick video. I like videos. I like putting my subscribers in my vlog. So if you have a getting to know Grim Green question that you just want to record on a quick video, you can also send that over nick at grimgreen.com as well and it will get watched and filed and used accordingly on the vlog here but I got a question here from Gary today uh, Gary writes in and says hey Nick I was wondering uh, I know you have favorite mods and atomizers you know the ones you always go to, go to when the camera is off and I'm gonna address that in a second but does it ever annoy you to have to spend time sometimes a lot of time vaping on devices that you don't really like all that much but use anyway because you want to give them a fair try in order to do a review. Some of my favorite reviewers, some of my favorite reviews are for devices that drive you crazy trying to make them work and there's no way. It's a piece of crap that should never have been brought to market. I'm waiting for the day that you beat one of those things with a hammer. You wouldn't be the first, but it's oh so satisfying, especially for us viewers. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, and so I just want to address the first sentence here. Uh, I know you have your favorite mods and atomizers. You know, the ones that you go to when the camera is off. Everything that I I am ever vaping throughout the course of a week uh, ends up on video. It ends up in the what I've been vaping. That is literally every setup that I have set up that I have been vaping. There's no like uh, secret off camera. You know, I don't go on camera and go, oh yeah, I really like the hexome. And then in real life, I just put the hexome on a shelf and I use something else. That That's not the case. I don't want that to be like a, a thing that people think of like, oh, well, he probably uses his like favorite stuff off camera, you know. No, I use every Everything I ever use throughout the course of the week and and you see it all it ends up on my Instagram stories it ends up on my Instagram newsfeed it ends up on the vlog everything that I'm using 
is what I'm using and, and that's what you see. I don't know if that's what you meant by that sentence, Gary, but I want to tell you, I want to assure you that there's no, I don't have any like secret off camera, really good vape setups that I use constantly or anything like that. And you know, it doesn't really bother me using bad devices. Uh, it's, it's, it's all part of the job. You know what I mean? It's all part of the experience. If you're going to do a review for something, you got to use it. You got to use it a bunch. You got to kind of get to know it, ins and outs, quirks and likes and dislikes and you know so far I believe I've never done a review where I haven't had something like as a con to say about something I know there's a lot of stuff that I gush over like that reload RDA you know I really love it there's very things I can you know there's very few things I can get against that I think it's a great RDA you know there's a lot of stuff I really like and yeah there's a lot of stuff that is just really bad and it's not so much that it's just bad like there's a difference I think between really bad products like I've used really bad products stuff like Gary says that should have never been brought to market just awful products but what I find uh, overall annoying about having you know I feel like that's a fucking first world problem being forced to use all this vape gear I have the luxury of getting to try a lot a lot of vape gear and what that's done to me is make me somewhat of a jaded person. When I get something in the mail from China and I'm like, oh cool, it's a single 18650, 80 watt device, it's got adjustment up down buttons, it's got a fire button, it's rounded on one side, it's, yeah, yep, it's a mod, it does exactly what it should, it's just another fucking mod. A lot of companies and a lot of companies in China in particular are kind of just releasing similar stuff over and over again, we have a lot of RTAs that, you know, oh, they all kind of work the same way and like this, and it's a top fill, and then UL does like, oh, that's the clicky top, and it's like, oh, well, that's that's kind of a cool new thing. And a lot of this stuff is just, it's just stuff. It's just the same guts in a different box, or it's, you know, different guts in a same box, and it's the same things, and a lot of the vape stuff now is just samey. It's like the samey samey stuff it's like oh squonkers are really popular so everybody release a squonker and they're all you know fully mechanical sometimes they're 3d printed sometimes it's just you know delrin constructed or something like that and it's like a fully mechanical single 18650 squonker and i go yeah that's that's cool, that's a thing. That's, after eight years, I've never seen that before. And I'm not saying that everybody, like every company has to do these great strides and in innovation, strides and in innovation, you know what I mean? I think it, I think what happens is, and this is turning into a little bit of a soapboxy thing, which I didn't want to happen, but I think what happens is we have become so like, consuming we just consume vape gear it's like if someone releases a box we all go oh okay that one and then like a billion people buy it and then there's another box that comes out that's maybe just as good it maybe looks a little bit similar maybe has like a little bit different of a screen it maybe has a different little bit configuration of the batteries it's still two 18650s and we go okay yeah let's buy a billion of those but really these two mods are just very very similar i would rather have like two banging good mods from like segeli okay i would love to have two banging good well thought out well engineered high quality fit and finish mods from segeli than the 20 that they have released in the last year and a lot of those are just similar samey things it's like oh no well now there's leds on the outside you see and you go oh okay it's that is that super different from the one that i have i mean minus the leds or anything like that i think chinese vape companies have just got in the habit of just cranking out mods monthly just new mods monthly new atomizers monthly 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 there's very little to distinguish these mods apart from each other i mean it's a box and it's a box mod and you adjust it up and down and it's a thing and it's 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 the same as that's going to be released a month from now and it's the same that was released just a month ago and so that like repetition of products is what i per i personally find annoying i like being surprised by things i like i like getting really cool products that surprise you and i like we're getting really shitty products that surprise you i love both ends of that spectrum it's the middle parts it's the mediocre parts it's the samey parts it's it's all that stuff in the middle where you go 
yeah, okay, that's a that's a thing. That's a new thing that's not really a new thing. Kind of like an old thing in a new box. And they just, they're just, like I said, they're just coming out monthly. If that's one thing I could change in the industry, that's what I would change is we don't need a new box mod from every company in China every month. What we need are really good, high quality, long lasting products that are, are good and it's a good thing. And then the company will like, stand behind that. Okay, sorry, I kind of got off track of what I was talking about there, but ultimately the good and the bad, that that's fine. I'm okay with the good and the bad. That doesn't bother me. That's all part of the job. It's going through all of the mediocre stuff in the middle that, that, I, that I find annoying. It's like that new Vicious Ant Squonker cool. It is a cool, cool squonker. It's expensive, but it is very well built. The bottle goes in a really new, unique way that's really not messy in any way. It's easy to fill and it's easy to put together. And that's like a cool product. And Vicious Ant released that and that's their, their product. That's their squonker. They released their squonker. Could you imagine a company like Samsung or Apple releasing a new phone every month? Would that drive anybody else completely crazy? Unfortunately, that's just what happens in the vape industry. I see it a lot because I get dozens of boxes that are all very similar. And I get dozens of mech mods that are all very similar. And I get lots of tanks and atomizers and things that it's like all kind of very similar-ish stuff. You know what I mean? That's the kind of part that bothers me. Anyway, I didn't mean for that to be like a soapboxy thing. I'm not trying to like, you know, rag on the vape industry because I love vaping. I love the industry. I'm just a huge cheerleader of vaping. And it's because I'm such a huge cheerleader of vaping that I would like to see China not release a new... We don't, like I said before, we don't need a new box mod every month from every company in China. We, we simply don't need that. What we need are good products so when people buy them it will last them longer than two months. That Stentorian Basilisk mod lasted me two weeks. Two weeks before it was broken and I dropped it three times and it was done. Done broken. I would have been beyond pissed off if I had spent like 70, 80 bucks on that only to have it break, literally break and crack the first time it hit the ground. I'd like to see higher quality products less, less, less often. Higher quality products left off, less often. That's where I'm going to leave that. Sorry, kind of turned into a little bit of a soapboxy thing. Anyway, Gary, I hope that answers your question. That's getting to know Grim Green, also known as, hey, let's get up on a soapbox and talk about the vape industry. But I digress now. So like I said, anybody who wants to send in a getting to know Grim Green question, hopefully not too intrusive, but if you'd like to know pretty much anything about me, I'm mostly an open book, I think. Send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com, and I always love video messages as well. So moving right along into the vlog, what I'd like to do right now is answer a few viewer mails. So like I said before the Getting to Know Grim Green segment, if anybody has any viewer mails that they would like possibly answered on the show, just send them on over. Nick at GrimGreen.com. Just mark it viewer mail and it can be kind of anything. You want to show me your setup? Totally cool. Ask a question? Totally cool. Anything you want to know? Totally cool. Technical questions or juice questions or buildy questions or any other questions. That's what this is for. Viewer mails. Uh, so Gregory writes in and says, hey Nick, hope you're doing well. My name is Greg. I've been a smoker for the last 16 years. I was two packs a day for the last few years. I picked up vaping about a year ago, but still couldn't put down the cigarettes. I found your videos uh, about a month or so ago, and I've been binge watching them since. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. There was one device that you kept mentioning that piqued my interest. I decided to pick up a Mi One a few weeks ago. Oh, fuck yeah, Mi One. Thanks to your videos and recommendations, I have hit one week smoke free. Uh, I know it's not that long, but I can pass on having a cigarette even when I really want one. I wanted to extend my appreciation for everything you do for the vaping community. Community. Thank you, Greg. If I'm lucky enough to get a spot in the vlog, you can use my name. Yes, Gregory. Totally cool. Uh, P.S. If you could also give a shout out to Chris at Empire Vape Co. Absolutely. Chris, there's a there's a fist and you need to bump it. Watching his videos on YouTube are what really got me into vaping. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome work, Chris. You are definitely shouted out. Greg, you're, you're definitely shouted out too. You know, that's why I'm such a huge advocate of the Me One. That's why I love it so much as I've talked to so many people that have been able to finally, finally transition completely into vaping by 
using the Mi One. I just think it's great. I just think it's super cool. So uh, let's talk to Patrick here. Patrick writes in. This is kind of a long one, but he says, going through some hard times, Grim. Please read. He writes in and says, hey, Nick, my name is Patrick. I just wanted to share a story with you. Uh, today on the bus, on my way home from work, I fell asleep and I had my backpack sitting next to me with my mod and juice in the front pocket. I walked home, took a shower, went to grab my mod and chill and listen to some Slayer on vinyl bonus points. And guess what? I look in my backpack, no mod or no juice. It was my only setup, an Axis Vapes M17 and Original Recipe Recoil. I sold all my mods and gear to buy that mod and I had it for about a week. I bought it off a friend and now I'm really hurting with no gear, no money, and any new stuff. This is not an attempt to beg you for something, but I just wanted to... I just wanted you to let people know to stay safe and not make stupid mistakes like I did. It's been about four hours with no vape and it's killing me due to the bills and such and I'm going to have to wait a while to get anything. Uh, if you would like to help, I'm not opposed to it, but I am not asking. I just would hate to see other people end up like this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's something that I'm always aware of when I'm traveling anywhere. I've been on the trains and buses and Ubers. I leave my vape in Ubers all the time. Please don't do that either. Don't leave your vape in an Uber. I left my vape in an Uber. I left my phone in an Uber. When I'm traveling, especially uh, through the airport and on the airplane, I, I'm always very well aware of where all my stuff is. Uh, I love your channel. It's so informative and has helped me learn so much about vaping. Even though we have never met, I can you a friend because you've never because you can help me cheer up when I am down by watching your videos and listening to the podcast. I love what you do for the community uh, and how you help people out. Stay metal, stay sipping on craft beer, and let's keep on vaping. Sincerely, your friend you've never met. Patrick. Yeah, absolutely, Patrick. I like that. Uh, the friend you've never met, Patrick. I feel that way. I think most of my subscribers, I think like 90% of my subscribers fall into that category of, oh, you're just you're just a friend I haven't met yet. Yeah, Patrick, um, that really sucks. I mean, uh, that's really terrible. Why don't you, why don't you email me back and we can work something out? I got, I got mods I'm looking at right here. I got, I, I can see like five mods right away right in front of me that I'm I'm just not I'm just not using and they would be better off in your hands so shoot me another email we'll work something out we'll get you back vaping again but uh yeah absolutely everybody out there be be careful, be careful. Uh, Daniel writes in and says, uh, please share, uh, this happened to a guy in a group where I live. He had the charger in his backpack. So the subject is batteries. And I guess this this gentleman's batteries vented. He says, this happened to a guy in one group where I live. He had the charger in his backpack with the batteries still in the charger. Please tell people that traveling with your batteries still in the charger is not a safe way to transport batteries. Yes, that is something I've never said. I think I've said that a few times on YouTube, but I haven't said it in a really long time. Don't put your batteries into a charger, even if the charger's unplugged. Don't travel like that because the charger can actually discharge your batteries as well and lead to, possibly lead to, sort of a running away venting situation. It's not going to happen every time, but the possibility is still there. In fact, I would like if Mooch, Battery Mooch, if you're watching this vlog, let us know down in that comment below. I will pin it. What, what causes that? I mean, don't put your batteries in the charger charger when it's unplugged and when you're traveling, but what causes it? I thought it was because the charger like has the ability to discharge your batteries at maybe too rapid of a pace or something can short out. It's metal on metal. Your contacts are still being touch so that's not a way that you want a travel uh coil master now evidently has a lot of battery cases they sent me eight thousand of them so always put your batteries in a case and yeah he sent me over a picture that looks yeah it, it looks like he bought an efest charger this is from uh facebook he says so this blew up in my freaking backpack unplugged purchased brand new yesterday has this happened to anyone destroyed my 200 dollars backpack and many other items plus two new batteries and yeah, it looks like he was just had his batteries in his charger. His charger was in his backpack. He was walking down the street. Something fucking happened and vented in there. So please, yeah, don't don't put your batteries in your charger when you're traveling with them. Uh, public service announcement courtesy of Daniel. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Battery Mooch, if you're watching, remember, just leave a little comment below. Just 
Just I like I like it when Battery Mooch comments on my videos because I always give out like battery information that's like 90% correct and then Battery Mooch will do the other 10%. He'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, actually it's this, this, and this, and then you go. I just really I just really trust Battery Mooch a lot. So thank you for what you do, Battery Mooch. And thank you, Dan Daniel, for writing in. Got some more viewer mails here. Kevin writes in and says, Hey Grim Green, huge fan. Me and the fiance watch your vlogs, and I also listen to the podcast all the time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think you two work well together. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm tell Ruby. We love the podcast, you guys. I love the podcast. Me and Ruby do a podcast, Culture of Clouds podcast. I'll throw a link down in the description where you can check it out. I think we just did 62 episodes and we're no signs of slowing down now. We both love the podcast. Anyway, um, I also love how you and Homeboy bust each other's balls all the time. Yeah, more him busting my balls than me busting his balls. I feel like my balls might get a little bit more busted on the reg <laughs> from Homeboy OC. He says, but I have a question for you. Are you ever going to prank back Dwayne? I mean, he got you with that nasty juice and he made you vape a tampon. I think it might be time to get him back. Have a good one. Vape on Kevin. Yeah. So look, I don't know. Here's the thing. I'm not a huge fan of like pranks. Pranks in my experiences, whenever I've pranked somebody, it's always made me feel guilty. Like, I want to apologize. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. That was, sorry, sorry, sorry. Even if it's just like a, like a, me like a mediocre prank, even if it's just like a dumb prank, it still makes me feel guilty. I'm not good at pranking people. I'm just, I'm just really bad at it. Really very bad at pranking people. So I don't know if anybody has any suggestions that won't make me feel like a terrible person. I would love to prank back Dwayne. I didn't prank him the whole vape tour because he, he drove the whole way. He, he was tired and, and cranky sometimes, he got a little bit cranky sometimes. So, you know, I was trying to make him comfortable. Like you need anything, you need water, you need some pre-workout, you need some, you need uh, some beef jerky. What do you need? You good to go? I was always, I was really, trying to like uh you know make sure Dwayne was comfortable I didn't feel like pranking him I feel like a prank while we were on tour would have just made him like punch a hole through the roof you know what I mean so maybe maybe we can make that happen maybe we can make that happen in the future we can get some prank action happening on Dwayne got another viewer mail here from Scott Scott writes in and says hey Nick my name is Scott I live in Ontario Canada um, where did you live before the California move I lived in Nevada I was just outside of Reno near Carson City Nevada that's where I lived for basically like 20 years of my life before that was Lake Tahoe, California. Uh, I was born and raised, I was born and raised in Nevada. I was born in California, raised in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Uh, then I lived in Carson City for a long time. I lived all over that area, Minden, Gardnerville, Dayton, Carson City, Reno area. I was there basically my whole life. I've only been in San Diego about three and a half years now and I love it. Not leaving, not not going back. But he goes on to say, I have a Pro Very Mini and I loved using the Kerfan Carto tank, which I actually do remember. With the extinction of the punched Carto, can you please recommend something I can use with it? The thought of just rolling, the thought of it just rolling around in a drawer is painful. I'd be a happy guy if you would set up yours and vape it in a retro segment. So I don't believe that I have a Kerfanis uh, Carto tank anymore. I could look through my tackle box, Scott. I could look through my tackle box there. I know there's some Cardo tanks in there, but I don't know if there's like that exact Cardo tank in there. That was a good Cardo tank though. As far as what you can use inside of it, uh, you might have to buy some punched Cardos. Uh, they do still exist somewhere on the internet. I'm sure of it. If not, you could probably still get a five pack of Bogue Cardomizers and punch them yourself. That's actually something I haven't done in a really long time. It's been over a year since I've used like a punched Cardo Cardo tank. I think I need to get that out for retro vaping coming up later. Like maybe in December we'll do a punched Cardo Cardo tank thing. But as far as I know, the only thing that fits inside of a Cardo tank is a Cardo miser. I don't think I don't think there's anything you can use inside of it. Although it would be really cool if someone did if someone made like an insert that you could use inside Cardo tanks to vape like, you know, Nautilus mini coils or something like that. The problem is the Cardo tank was great at the time, but it wasn't the most efficient. It was a bitch to set up. It was a little bit of a bitch to fill up as well. So I don't know if it's like worth the R&D and time and money to like make an insert for a Cardo tank. So I apologize. I don't I don't know what you can use 
continues with your Kerfanis tank. He says, lastly, I'm having a bitch of a time finding your gear in Canada. Yeah, I want a Rebel and a Grim Green branded me one in the worst way. Um, the only way I can find them is to pay crazy exchange and obscene customs brokerage fees. Even shipping from the States is a deal breaker. Vape budget hands straight to facepalm. Please point me towards a Canadian vendor that carries your stuff so I can have one. Thanks, Scott. I guess it's a thing to have to say please use this slash my name whatever in your vlog absolutely thank you for the permission scott um here's the bummer part i don't i have zero access in canada i have zero contacts in canada i have zero distribution in canada i i have i don't i have no contact with any vapors in Canada. So if there's someone, you know, if there's like a, if there's a shop in Canada or a distribution thing in Canada, yeah, let me know because that's a, that's an area that, yeah, I would really like to be able to get people some, some cool shit like a recoil rebel or some grim green stuff. I think that would be awesome. But unfortunately, as it stands right now, I have no, <laughs> I have no contacts in Canada. I know Ruby Roo gets her juice distributed through Hayestown Vapes. So she has her stuff in Canada, but me, no, I do not. I want to, but I do not. So I promise that something at the top of my list, I have a big long list. It's like my to-do list just is a mile long right now. And opening up uh, channels in Canada, like uh, retail distribution channels is in Canada is something that I really, really very much want to do. So I, I apologize, it's not available now, but I promise, I promise that I'm working on it. And lastly, I got a viewer mail here from Alpha Nexus Gaming. He writes in and says, Hey Nick, first off, I'm a huge fan of your lineup. Uh, I am in need of advice on sticking with vaping. I feel so much better when I vape, but oftentimes I still find myself smoking cigarettes. Any tips would be very helpful. Also, I'm a huge fan of how the recoil RDA looks. Unfortunately, I am in one of the tightest budgets possible. I really hope one day to be able to use one of them. Also, this doesn't have to be on any videos. I'm just looking for advice. Thanks very much, Derek. Well, Derek, unfortunately, this did end up on a video and you kind of don't have any choice about it. I think a lot of people know what I'm going to say here. Uh, mouth to lung, 18 milligrams, some juice. I think that's an amazing place to start for vapors. I recommend 18 milligram, 50-50, just regular PGVG, 18 milligram juice to start off with rather than salt, Nick, because I know there's a lot of people, including myself, including me, Nick, I have a really hard time vaping salt, Nicks. They are, they're harsh and they're intense and it's just not a satisfying vape for me. I personally do not enjoy salt, Nick juices, but what I do enjoy is high nicotine 50-50 PGVG juices. You know, I'm a huge cheerleader of the Mi One. If you can find a Mi One anywhere and some 18 milligram 50-50 non-salt nick juice, I feel like you could set that up and have a very successful vaping experience. And just remember that there's no rules with vaping. No one says that as soon as you buy your vape, that's all you have to use. There's a lot of people that will, you know, what we call in the industry, industry lingo is dual users. People like my brother that smoked and vaped for almost a year before fully switching over over to vaping. If you're dying and you're craving a cigarette and it's stressing you out, go smoke a cigarette. Just do it and don't feel bad about it and come inside and continue vaping. Once you get a setup that really works for you, like for me, it's the V1. For me, for me, when I started vaping, for me, it was the DSA 901 and I would not recommend getting a DSA 901 because they are terrible. But back when I first started vaping, if I had something like the Me One or the Nautilus Mini or some sort of mouth to lung tank like the K-Fun or the Berserker, or something like that, it would have been, uh, it would, would have been just a world of difference. It would have, I would have been much more successful than I was at switching over to vaping. Thankfully now we do have a lot of options and unfortunately now we have a lot of options, like so many, too many options. I would recommend something mouth to lung, high nicotine, 18 milligram, stick with it when you want to stick with it. But if you're really craving a cigarette, have a cigarette. And the more you vape and the less you smoke, the more appealing vaping will be be and the less appealing cigarettes will be. And that's what really did it for me is I was in my bedroom. I was laying in bed and I was watching Pee Wee's Playhouse. I don't know why I remember this so vividly, but I was watching Pee Wee's Playhouse. And I don't remember if it was like 
Cartoon Network or Adult Swim or something that was showing old Pee-wee's Playhouse at 11.30 at night. But I was watching Pee-wee's Playhouse and this was, when I first started, this was like, uh, do I vape right now or do I have a cigarette right now? And I remember laying in bed and thinking, you know what? I'm really craving a cigarette. I don't want to get out of bed. I'm just going to sit here and vape. And vaping satisfied me enough. You you just just vape. There's no like I said, there's no rules with vaping. If you want to sit and just vape, vape until you're satisfied and then you go, "Okay, I'll just put it down for a little while, do something else, and when I feel like I want a cigarette again, I'll just I'll just keep vaping." And that can be like a 40-minute session. That can be all day long. I vape all day long. I'm rarely in my house without a mod in my hand. I just vape. You just, just vape. Just the more you vape, the more you'll enjoy it. The less you smoke, the less you'll miss it. And when you go that first like 24 hours with just vaping, the first time you light up a cigarette after that, it just, it kind of feels gross. It's kind of like, and then smoke gets in your eyes and you're like, okay, okay okay where's my vape like that's kind of the breaking point that i feel like a lot of people get to is that after vaping indoors in your house laying in bed watching peewee's playhouse and vaping the idea of going outside and at the time it was winter so the idea of going outside and putting on your jacket and putting on your gloves and going outside and lighting up a gross cigarette just becomes less and less appealing that's that's the only advice i can give you other than that if there's any vape shops in your area go look at gear watch youtube videos and see what you're kind of gonna be into you know what i mean there's a lot of vapors on youtube and you know there's a lot of reviewers on youtube and there's a lot of in-depth videos on YouTube that'll show you like this is how it goes together This is what it vapes like I think YouTube is a great resource and I think vape shops are a great resource as well So sorry for the really long answer. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up the viewer mail segment and Like I said at the beginning if anybody has any questions that they would like answered on this here vlog Just send them on over nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it viewer mail any questions you might have whatsoever And what we're gonna do right now after viewer mail is uh, oh, it's time to taste a very random juice Okay, so the juice that I have to taste today was actually a gift, and he, he sent me a handwritten letter, like just rocking it old school, but he writes and says, uh, hey Nick, please don't mind my band handwriting, uh, I'm going Stone Age on your ass. But anyway, it's Zach, uh, the one you've been emailing back and forth with, here's the juice that I've been promising to send you and have you try out. Uh, like I stated in the emails, it's from Blind Squirrel. It's called Blue Voodoo. Oh, no, it's from Blind Squirrel slash Blue Voodoo, and it's called Prickleberry. Prickleberry. I wanted you to try this out of the fact that it's not like other juices. At least uh, it's not. At least to me, it's not. And I thought it would be cool for you to try it in your juice tasting segment. The flavor profile is sweet dark fruits meets, des meets desert star prickly pear. I've never had desert star prickly pear. I, I hope you enjoy it. It's one of my favorites. I also sent you a scent of coils that I made myself. Uh, I couldn't just send you only juice. The coils are stainless steel 316. It's two 26 gauge cores with a 38 gauge outer, all stainless steel, three millimeter drill bit, should be around 0.12 to 0.14. Please try not to laugh at them. No, come, what? I would not laugh at your coils, bro. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. They're cool. They're good. They're good. They look like uh, little stainless steel fused Claptons. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think these look pretty clean. This is much cleaner. Ah! I feel like that's a uh, pretty fucking clean Claptons right there, bro. That's better than I could do. Thank you for writing the specs of the coils on there too, because the Sharpie that is on the outside is uh, Ill illegible. Uh, I can't tell. I can't actually tell which side is up or not. It looks like it says... I can't even read it. I can't even read it. But thank you for writing that on there. But thank you especially for writing it on here. Uh, sorry to ramble on, but one last thing. If it's not too much to ask, could you give a shout out to the Facebook group I'm a part of uh, and help moderate? The name of the group is Mods RDA's Coils. Yeah, absolutely. Mods RDA's Coils on Facebook. Boom. You are shouted out. Bump the fist. Anyway, sorry uh, to make this so long, but I hope you enjoy what I sent you. And if it makes it into a vlog, of course, you can use my name. Thanks for all you do uh, for the vape industry and keep fighting the good fight and yeah nick let's keep on vaping thanks zach zach 
Thank you so much, bro. That's awesome. Thank you for the coils and thank you for the juice. We're going to be tasting this here juice. I got my Axis Vapes M17 out just because I haven't had it out in a while. Topped with the Reload RDA, which is, look, the Reload is great. The Reload is going to be like one of those in December. It's going to be in my top five favorite of the year things. I think it's just a stellar RDA. All right, Prickleberry, what do you got for me? Huh. Oh. Ah. All right, cool. Well, I'm just going to juice up these coils right here, and then we're going to vape it. I'm going to do that thing that I always do that we had a contest for in my last vlog. I'm going to vape on it a bunch, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. And if we're going to talk about the contest real quickly, like, um, thank you to everybody that entered. It was an overwhelming amount of videos that I'm actually still going through. So the cutoff date, it's cut off, but I'm going to need another week to go through all this video footage. I'm going to put together a little compilation of what people did and I still need to pick a winner because I haven't got a chance to watch every video I mean this was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos and I'm trying to watch them like on my phone in the RV with headphones and it just wasn't working so now that I'm back at home base I'm gonna announce the winner of the last vlog two dollar sale in the next vlog so basically this was just a big month long over a month long contest oh yeah the vapors oh I don't have a drip tip. Wow, that's dumb. I look dumb right now. Okay, hang on. Okay, well, I just panicked and grabbed an Ultim tip, so that'll have to do for now. Anyway, this is a 0.43 dual coil, 70 watts, Axis Fapes M17 Reload RTA, RDA, sorry, Prickleberry. Oh, okay. Well, give me a second to vape it and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so this prickleberry juice is a very mellow juice. I feel like there is the least amount of flavorings in this possible. I think it's almost, almost not flavored enough. I can taste the VG in it, which is like a slightly, very slightly soapy, but sweet flavor. I do get some notes. I don't know what a prickleberry tastes like. It does taste like berries. It tastes like there's a little bit of blueberry in here. It tastes like there's a little bit of raspberry in here. And then there's uh, the prickleberry over it is a little bit, and like I said, I've never had a prickleberry. I don't know what they're supposed to taste like. But to me, I get a little bit of like a mojito, non-minty mojito type of flavor. It's like a it's like a bright, refreshing sort of fruit, fruit flavor. I wish this was a little bit more intense. You know, when we're on that line of over-flavored juices and under-flavored juices, I feel like this juice in particular is a little bit under-flavored. It could just be the real Reload RDA, although the Reload RDA generally has very nice flavor because of the Kennedy style airflow. It's going right up at your mouth. When I knuckle tasted it, it tasted quite delicious, but some of that flavor is kind of getting lost in here right now. I don't know if I have it too hot. I knocked it down to 60 watts because 70 watts was a little too warm. It's nice. It's a nice light fruit flavor. If you are bored of over flavored juices with a ton of sweetener in them, this one is nice and light and fruity and refreshing and just a touch, just a touch under flavored in my opinion. The flavor, pardon me, the flavor that I do get from it is nice. It's a very nice light flavor. Like I said, it's not heavy or weighty or anyway. It's just, it's just light. That's all I can describe it. It's a light fruit flavor. Anyway, Zach, thank you so much for sending me the juice. Thank you so much for sending me the coils. I will absolutely use those. I'm going to try to track down where this juice is sold uh, if anybody is interested in the Prickleberry from Blue Voodoo. So yeah, what we're going to do right now, we're coming down to the end. It's time to wrap this vlog up. Let's do my favorite comments of the week. I uh, got a few favorite comments of the week here. Uh, Campbell McIntosh writes in and says, uh, my cat got neutered yesterday and now he looks at me as if to say, you bastard. Yeah, I imagine that's got to be pretty disorienting for any animal. Imagine being a cat or a dog and then one day you have all your junk and then the next day suddenly half your junk's gone. 
that's that's crazy that would be crazy to be an animal so it yeah it should be looking at you like that like dad what the hell what'd you do <laughs> uh this one just made me laugh uh, london writes in and says if aliens came down and needed a human specimen i'd nominate jess she's the best our species has to offer <laughs> well i would argue with you if i could sir i mean not not me I feel like that's pretty good. If aliens come down and wanted a specimen and be like, hey, maybe check out Grim Green a little bit. I want to go on alien spaceships too, bro. I'm not exactly sure which video this was left on, but Toby left a comment and said, Nick, your hair at the end looks like you're some 90s rave guy, ready to do lots of ecstasy and party two days in a row. LOL. Cheers from Germany. Cheers back to you, Toby. I don't remember. Is that what it looks like now? No, right now I just look like hell. Right now I just look, that's the worst. This is why I wear a hat, everybody. Oh, I got a bit of a correction here from Charlie. Charlie left a comment and said, the gene chip, gene chip, is from Vupu. Gene, gene, like DNA, makes sense to me. Genes, genetics, DNA, genetics, gene chip, DNA. Yeah, that kind of makes a lot of sense, Charlie. Thank you. Uh, second to last comment of the week comes from a guy named, or a guy, person, I don't know, Izzy. Izzy Montana left a comment and said, Dear Vape Community, I'm in need of a new setup and I don't care about price tag. Was considering getting a RTA, maybe, either the Petri RTA, Kylan RTA, or Reload RTA. I just can't decide on a mod. Please comment and help a brother out. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. Leave a comment down below for Izzy like we did before. Just say, hey, Izzy, this. Hey, Izzy, this setup. Izzy, if you're watching, go look in those comments down below. There's going to be a whole mess of suggestions for you. And then, of course, my last favorite comment of the week. I don't get trolled very often anymore. And that's not like an open invitation to troll me. But I just don't get trolled anymore. I don't get any really like gross or mean or nasty comments or anything like that but this one from john butterworth was too was too good to pass up he just left a comment and said boring yawn boring yawn well if that's the worst criticism i have to deal with i guess i'm okay with that <laughs> john your opinion of me matters very little anyway that's it we're done this vlog i'm put it, it's i'm putting it to bed i'm put, stick a fork in it because it's done this vlog is done but that's what i got everybody thank you thank you so much for watching don't forget you can always catch me here on monday and tuesday for reviews if not i'll see you back here next thursday for the vlog everything i talked about all the links will be down in the description below but thank you thank you so much for watching everybody i hugged a lot of people on the tour a lot of people make it to the end of the vlog and i owe everybody that makes it to the end of the vlog a hug because you are truly my favorite people anyway that's what i got everybody thank you so much for watching and as always let's keep on vaping Don't use any of that shit, Nick. Don't use any of it. It's all crap. Edit all that out. It's all garbage. It's all bullshit.